This is part two of the wiring for the auxiliary lights and the GPS circuit. To splice in for the relay that I want to use, which is here, what that does is when you get a 12 volt source, it then connects a little solenoid inside there and it then only gives power when the bike is on. So I can't drain my battery by leaving my auxiliary lights or my GPS on. So this, um, these waterproof ones here, what they do is you have to pop it open, that first pop there, that's the continuous wire, that's the one that I put on the um, hot positive side of the auxiliary power, and then what you do is you take the um, other lead, and you don't want to strip it because then it doesn't hold as well, so you leave the unstripped lead, which is my red one, that I put in the right side of this here, and once you put those two wires in there, you close this left side here, you flip that up and it'll clamp onto the um, wire, close that in, so it closes in like that. And then once you have both wires in, what I did was I, take, I took a pair of needle nose and I pushed the metal guillotine splicer down and then I've got my, again my through wire is here on the left and my offshoot, my 12 volt red is over here. I'll show you here. So I push that down, then you clamp the, put the cover down over it. And uh, these these waterproof ones, they come with grease in them already. So the grease is a um, is going to what's going to provide the waterproofing. You can see that goop in there. That just looks like a Vaseline, but it's a must be a dielectric grease, and it works. So that's what I've put here. So I put that on the light green wire coming out of the. Um, auxiliary power so that's gonna be my 12 volt and then my red is gonna go into that hot power source for the relay which will then connect my um, real power coming from the bike which is here and I'll split that off into a power source for the GPS and a power source for the lights so they're on one fuse but they're both very low wattage I'm gonna start going through the details of how I crimped all my connectors, coated them with the antioxidation fluid, and applied the liquid tape to seal the back ends, and then applied some shrink wrap in different places. So again, if you wanna skip forward to the end and see the final assembly, go ahead and do that now. This is gonna be a lot of detail on how all these connections were made. This is the liquid tape I'm gonna use. Um... I picked white because I figured I could find if I missed a spot I could see a black hole better than if I have black I can't see a little hole but uh, you'll see what that looks like when I get them painted up. I'm getting ready to put the bullet connectors on my LED headlights and when you put these on I'm using the dielectric grease um, to lubricate the bullets themselves the male and female connections here and when these things would be disconnected the possibility would be that the positive would have a hot side that could touch something on the negative side of the bike and blow the fuse. So what I want to do is use the female on the um, positive hot side coming from the source and the male on the positive uh, load side here, meaning the red. And then I'll do the opposite when I um, put the ground together because the ground it doesn't really matter if it should touch. Um, but you always want to make sure that this um, positive here coming from the source power wouldn't ever have an ability to touch something negative. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wire these up and then I'm going to use uh, liquid tape to seal the back end of them. I'm using uh, 14 to 16 gauge uh, bullet connectors. I've got uh, 10 sets here but I only need 4 to get this done and um, I'll show you what they look like when I get them crimped. So when I crimp these leads, um, I like to take, find the split side and put it against the continuous part, which means that I'm actually pushing the crimp on the continuous part on the other side. So I put the antioxidant on the ends of the wire, and again, I'm gonna put the loaded end in the male bullet and I'll put the source power in the female so that it can never uh, flip around and touch something on the bike and short out my fuse. But this is the uh, um, 
antioxidants to increase, put on the uh, inside of them, keep them uh, from corroding over time. You know, hopefully these will be on the bike for 10 years and I won't have to think about them again. I'll have them sealed up with the liquid tape as well. So there I've got them crimped. Now I'm going to try to seal up the back side. This is my first time using this liquid tape product. We'll see how it works. So it seemed to work pretty good. What I did is I kind of put a big glob in there and then I swirled the wire around inside of the um, collar there. So as you can see I kind of have these leads potted in here and uh, we'll see how long it takes to dry and I'll leave those set while I get the uh, other stuff done. This is my second set. Again I've put the female side of the uh, power side so that it can't touch any negative source and blow a fuse on the, when it's on the motorcycle. And the reason you do these opposite is that if you did both males on the power side, what would happen is if those ever, you disconnect them and then they accidentally touch, you'll blow your fuse and if you don't have a fuse, you would blow the circuit on the motorcycle or short your battery. So um, in this case, I've got this um, reversed, Murphy proofed one side female, one side male, and I'm uh, on the motorcycle side, my negative is going to be the male that's going to be protruding so that it can't uh, find anything. Uh, it'll only ground to the motorcycle, it won't. So what you can see is I've tried to put a big drop on top, and now I'm going to take the connectors and swirl the wire around so it draws itself in to kind of pot that end. So after twisting those back and forth, uh, the black one gave me some trouble so I had to pull its mate out. What happened was the it was sealing too well and it didn't let the air come out. But if you just twist those back and forth that mound of liquid tape will draw itself in and kind of pot those wires in there. So I'm going to let these things sit for a while and let them set up. And then that also gives me a little bit of a support in that wire so it won't uh, fail or fatigue over time. So on my switch, you can see that it says power on the left, load in the middle, and ground on the right. So what I'm going to do is put my uh, power side is going to come from the relay. It's going to come in this side. I will connect the lights red to here, and then my ground black will be on the right side here, the ground. And I'm going to prepare the right angle connectors for these right now. Decided to leave in a little blooper from my wife. She was the peanut gallery telling me what I was saying over and over and things like that. So sorry if too much is repetitive, but this is a little blooper comic relief for the break it up a little bit. So <laughs> Now I'm ready to begin wiring the right angle leads for the power. I will run, that'll be red from the relay. I will run the red from the lights. The load will go on the middle one and then on the right side will be the black ground that will run back to the battery. And so when I put these on the motorcycle, the light side is the ground side and that's on the up for me. So when I put these in the motorcycle, see they'll be black. And so I will begin working on putting the wires in here, potting them with the liquid tape, and then crimping them, and I'll get my wires ready to go while the uh, auxiliary light potting liquid tape begins to take hold. And I will also use the antioxidant joint compound inside my female connectors here on a right angle, as well as on the spades. I'll put a little bit of coating on each of those, trying to make sure that I don't create any uh, loss of corrosion and lose connection over time since these are really low uh, wattage applications on the GPS and on the auxiliary lights. Joint compound is on, ready to insert it and then I'll pot it. I've given these a few minutes to dry, probably like 45 minutes. And there's some little spots in here, again this is why I picked white for this liquid tape, there's a spot there. There's a spot right here that you can see where I'll hit that again with some more liquid tape to make sure that if I've done anything good that I don't leave a hole. This is why I picked the white liquid tape. I see on this one I have a small spot that I'm going to recoat with more liquid tape to try to weatherproof it. 
This is my double ground coming from the switches to a bullet connector that I've already potted and put the antiox on. Now I'm going to do a quick heat shrink wrap on the two wires to the connector so that it has a little bit more rigidity and stability. Here I have the powered end coming from the relay going to the power sources of my switches. This is what limits the power to the switches to only come on when the auxiliary gives the relay the 12 volt source so I can't um, run my battery down with the aux lights or the GPS. So this is ready for the anti-ox coating and potting into the right angles or right side of the switches which is the non-light side and that will give the power to the switch and then the middle one is the load is what's going to run one to the GPS and then my split red cable will go to the two auxiliary lights as the load. I have the two wires going to the red on the auxiliary lights right angle into the load side of my auxiliary light switch there in the middle is where this one's going to go these two will connect to the red bullets here again because this is a powered side no metal exposed uh, using the female sides now I have my double red power that's going to go to the middle post of the auxiliary light power switch through a right angle connector. So I have these stripped and coated with the anti-ox. I'm going to put them into the right angle connector and then pot it. Then I have to put the bullet connectors onto the end of this wire and those bullet connectors will connect to the red ends of the auxiliary lights. I have my state of the art electronic test bed ready to go, i.e. my kitchen table complete with voltmeter, my battery out of my V-Strom, and I've got the products that I used here, which is the relay from AutoZone. I was able to find that, just a 4 pole 30 amp relay, the liquid tape, and then the um, anti-oxidation joint compound for all the connections that I put in. But basically, I've got um, a relay set up for the auxiliary. That concludes part two. Stay tuned for part three.